we were both in Bosnia at a pretty young age during the war in the early 90s. I really got my start there as a journalist. Is that kind of what happened with you? Like, what was your experience in Bosnia? Well, I mean, by Bosnia, I had already been working as a photographer for about four years. And I had already been to war. I had already been a prisoner. I had already uh, had some impact with my photography. But it really was like in the former Yugoslavia from the first war in Slovenia to Croatia to Bosnia, where I really became very dedicated to a story and very passionate about what I was doing. The wars in the Yugoslavia lasted for 10 years, and I went probably spent about five years on the ground. So I was there during the first war, and I was outside President Milosevic's house when he was arrested and taken to The Hague. So I kind of saw the whole kind of gamut of the whole thing. I think what's interesting is that understanding that the role that journalism, and, and in my case, the photojournalism can play in being out there and helping people make informed decisions and having people react to the work is, you know, is very powerful. Very early on in my career, in, in 1989, I took some photographs in Panama that were later used as one of the justifications for the U.S. invasion of Panama. It wasn't whether or not I agreed with the invasion, it was the understanding that the work was out there for people to digest, understand. It is an amazing feeling to understand that your work is contributing in, in some way to to the knowledge of the world about what's yeah. going on. You've been in Darfur, you've been in Bosnia, Kosovo, and Afghanistan, Panama, and probably a dozen other places. Which one affected you the most, do you think? I think probably because I spent so much time in the former Yugoslavia. I think it was sort of not just one part of that war, but all the different yeah. wars. And it also given that it was very early in my career, probably shaped my ideas about what photography can do and what it can't do and what I could do and what I couldn't do. And also I was a prisoner and I was, um, had been arrested countless times and I was on a death list. And so there were a lot of sort of different experiences throughout that uh, story that, you know, affected me in a number of different ways. Yeah. And one thing that I've noticed a little bit while looking, looking through your work is that I get a real sense of your compassion. And I don't always get that in photography. I mean, they're amazing photographers where you just don't quite feel what they're feeling. Do you feel that way? I mean, do you, like, do you take on their, so their burdens a bit when you're there? I hope so, because I think it's really important for me to have some feeling and some emotion of what I'm photographing in order for it to come through yeah. in my imagery so the viewer can feel yeah. that. And so I am trying to be very conscious of, of finding that line where there is an emotional interaction between myself and what's going on that translates into the image, but at the same time not becoming so overly emotional, because these are very difficult situations that I'm not able to take a photograph and I wind up, there's, there winds up not being any reason for me to be there. There's two photos from the Bosnian War that really struck me. One is very famous. It's three Serb paramilitary fighters standing over several dead civilians who look like they've just been killed. Did you understand at that moment when you shot that, that you were taking a photograph that would be seen around the world and have an enormous impact on how people perceived what was happening? No, I think the only thing I was thinking about when I took that photograph was here is photographic evidence of a brutal killing of unarmed middle-aged civilians by well-armed paramilitaries and that hopefully this work will be seen and seen incredibly quickly and will prove to the world like there has to be some sort of interaction or intervention in Bosnia because this is what this war is going to be like. I didn't understand kind of beyond that what that photograph would wind up representing both in terms of the failure of photography and the failure of the world and also how that wound up becoming like such an amazing symbol uh, for, for the Bosnians. Do you know what happened to those three guys? I mean, has that, I mean, do you know who they are or are they just anonymous? Two of them are dead and the one, um, the one who is kicking um, the people is in jail in Belgrade now. And so he knows that that photo was taken. I mean, he's... He's quite proud. As far, I've never seen him again, but he's told colleagues of mine that he's very proud and considered that he was made very famous by that photograph. The other photo is a um, very powerful photo of uh, a Bosnian Muslim soldier sort of holding onto a tree uh, outside a sort of burned out house. Where was that? Do you remember? This was in the Bihać pocket in 1995 as the Bosnian army was... Uh, after the bombings by NATO were starting to, to win, basically. And I was with um, units that were made up of uh, 
survivors from these areas that were going back and essentially fighting for their villages. And this man basically fought to retake his, to retake his home, his hometown. And after uh, the Serbs had fled, he came to me and said, you know, I want to go back to my home. Do you want to see it? So we went off to, to his home and we, we arrived there and the home was burned out. There was nothing left. And, and as he was talking, he said, you know, all 69 people, including all members of my family, were killed in this village and they're supposedly buried where we were standing in his front yard. And then at some point I said, okay, let's go back. And as we were walking back to go to wherever we were based, I looked back and he had just sort of leaned against a tree and he just had started sobbing. And kind of all of this emotion, probably from the last four years, where he had finally come back home and he was essentially with his family. And it was very much for me a symbol of kind of the end of that particular part of the war where they destroyed the entire country and nobody really had anything left. Another remarkable photo is taken in Darfur of a young woman in this incredible dress. You want to tell me about, about her? Well, you know, Darfur is unfortunately, it's the third genocide that I've documented in my career, which is just pretty horrific with Rwanda, Bosnia, and, and, and Darfur. And I went to Darfur to do a project for UNICEF to see what was happening with the children, to see like if the war was going to kind of drag another generation in, into, the, into the conflict, which of course it's done now. The war has been going on for about 10 years. And I was driving, um, driving through um, the desert around one of the uh, displacement camps, and I saw sort of three little figures off in the distance. It was about 6.30 in the morning. We drove up to them and stopped the girls. And I had a translator and we were talking to the girls and asking what they were doing. And they were basically, they were, they were going out to get wood uh, so their families could, could cook some of the food, food rations that they were be being given. And in the photograph, you can see that there are no trees anywhere around. As she was telling her story, that's, that her journey to, take, to go and get wood could take seven or eight hours, or maybe even a whole day, maybe even two days. And she's probably about nine or 10 years old with her two friends. It was like a very like, odd thing, like why would these young girls be going off on their own? And it was because this trip was so dangerous that if the father went, and he was caught by one of the uh, Janjaweed, which were one of the groups that were attacking um, the Darfuris, or by the army, the father would absolutely be killed. If the mother went out and did it, she most likely would be raped. So the parents were hoping that by sending up a young girl, that she wouldn't be raped and she would be able to go and get wood. In the photograph, when I just lifted up my camera, she just kind of put her, bowed her head down and her arms, put her arms behind her and just held herself with such dignity and such beauty that was reinforced by, by the way she was dressed and the light that was hitting her that I found it just to be a really nice, lovely portrait of her. So tell me, where are we right now? What are, what are, we, what are we looking at around us? Well, we're uh, at the Anastasia Photo Gallery. This is um, my exhibition called Testimony, which is a collection of different images over the course of the last 24 years, starting in 1989 and ending in uh, 2012. Covers not everything that I've done, but certainly a, a good deal uh, of work of historical moments where there are photographs that have affected the public and photographs that, that mean something to me. Creating this idea that when work like this is put out there and people see it, that there's a sense of responsibility and there's this sense of accountability uh, that needs to exist. Looking at one of my photographs from Bosnia, these executions, and some of my other work from Bosnia that has been used by the International War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague and has in, helped indict war criminals. And that kind of sense of accountability has been very important to me, to make sure that the participants that are committing war crimes are, are held and, uh, and hopefully you know, convicted for their crimes if they're guilty. What's being done here at Anastasia Photo is something you know, very unique and rare but incredibly important. What the gallery is doing by sort of dedicating their mission to having documentary photography come to life in, in a place in, in New York City is something that I think is incredibly commendable. As a photographer, seeing people interact with the work also is something that is very much a reinforcement for me to go back and do this kind of work. And it's a very a uh, powerful feeling to know that my work is affecting people and to hear it from them directly. I'm very pleased that Anastasia Photo decided to endow Risk uh, with funds because every, every show 
um, they choose a, an organization that is related to the show that's on the wall. And obviously risk is, is a perfect match. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about what you, <coughs> you guys are doing. Like many important things, uh, risk came out of a real tragedy. Uh, a good friend of mine, Tim Hetherington, amazing photographer, uh, he was killed in Libya and during the Civil War. I was supposed to be with him on assignment. I couldn't go. He got killed. And he bled out. He just died of loss of blood. It wasn't necessarily, he didn't have to be a mortal wound. But none of the journalists around him knew what to do. And there are things you can do if someone has an arterial bleed. I mean, it's dangerous, but there are things you can do. No one knew what to do. Had I been with him, I would have watched him die because I didn't, wouldn't have known what to do either. So after his death, I decided to start a nonprofit that would train freelance, experienced freelance war reporters in combat medicine. The group's name is RISC, R-I-S-C, Reporters Instructed in Saving Colleagues. We usually do our training sessions in New York, but we just had one in London. And eventually we're going to have one in Istanbul and try to bring it closer to the sort of center of gravity of foreign reporting in the Middle East. I think that's fantastic. I know that for the first six years of my career, I had no training, no medical training, no hospital environment uh, classes, and I just made mistake after mistake and was lucky enough to not have any interaction with anybody that needed uh, medical help. There's just such a, a lack of, of, of training out there. And I think that each class that you guys provide, without question, will save lives of other journalists. It probably will also save lives of civilians because we so often ha encounter them in the field. I've bandaged up many people and taken people to hospitals and stuff like that. It's just such a great thing that you're doing and I think that it's really fantastic that, that Anastasia Photo um, believes in that cause as well because it's a perfect, perfect complement to the work that's on the walls.